Okay, wow. Um, my whole intro that I just recorded didn't record because I didn't hit record. I said record a lot. Hey, you guys, what is up? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Chanel and we screen movies. I try to let you know what's going on inside my brain as I'm watching them. So as an actor, sort of director, sort of writer, who's like at the very beginning of her career, I just like to let you know what I'm thinking about when I'm watching these movies, how they're put together, if there's a really cool directing choice, a really cool camera choice, a really cool acting choice. That brings us to today's movie, which is Pulp Fiction. Oh my God. I really do like Tarantino films. I'm a, I'm a fan of Tarantino's. I have seen a handful of his movies. Definitely love, love, love that satire. Love that like black comedy that he incorporates. I love when he rewrites history. Like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was, oh my gosh. Um, so I'm definitely a Tarantino fan. I am expecting violence, blood, like just, yeah, the most violent ever. And I know nothing about Pulp Fiction. I don't even understand the title really. Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction. I get nothing from that. Pulp, I know what fiction means, fake. Nonfiction, real. I, uh, yeah, I have no idea what Pulp Fiction is about. I... No Travolta's in it, right? John Travolta and I, th is this where we get the iconic black like bob that I see a lot of women dress up as for Halloween? And I just looked up, which I said in my first intro, but I'm gonna repeat it in my second intro because you guys weren't there for that one. Um, I thought this was Tarantino's first like thing that he got known for, but no, that was Reservoir Dogs. I switched them in my brain. So it was Reservoir Dogs, then Pulp Fiction. I've never seen Reservoir Dogs. Some might say, maybe I should have started there. Not me, it's not how I roll. I like to start in the middle of things, you know what I'm saying? Pulp Fiction is from, oh my God, Mia Thurman's in this. Is that her name? Uma Thurman. <laughs> it's cause I saw her name was Mia Wallace, so I called her Mia Thurman. I'm not gonna look up the plot. It's The log line is right here and I'm not even gonna read it. That's how little I would like to know about this before we start. And yeah, without further ado, let's get right into today's watch, which is Pulp Fiction from 1994. I always like to do a little ah beforehand, but I, I mean it. Banner and being characteristically printed on rough, unfinished paper. Oh, Pulp. Pulp. It. Do you love how they answer my question immediate? You sound like a sensible f man. That's what I sound like. Duck. Can I get anyone more coffee? Oh. Wow, I love just starting with it like that. Garcon, coffee. Garcon means boy. <laughs> it's a brilliant little piece of dialogue. Nobody ever robs restaurants. It helps Why me not? really understand his character that he said that. Boss. You know, that's really cool to me. I'm ready. Let's do it right now, right here. Come on. All right, same as last time, remember? Your crowd control, I handle employees. Wow, I'm loving these guys. These are brilliant little characters, wow. I love you, honey bunny. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! And I'll execute every mother last one of you! Yes, brilliant opening, strong. So that was what, like five, four-ish minutes of just an opening where in real time we watched them decide to rob. Was that, that was Amanda Plummer, wasn't it? That was Amanda Plummer that I'm recognizing. Pulp. Also, I was thinking a lot about pulp during that scene, like a soft pulp, flesh pulp. We're gonna blow up a lot of people, aren't we? And we're gonna see the insides of their bodies, aren't we? All right, well, you can walk into a movie theater in Amsterdam and buy a beer. And I don't mean just like a little paper cup. I'm talking about a glass of beer. And you know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh, man, they got the metric system. It was <laughs> a nice little bait and switch. They have the metric system, idiot. <laughs> call it a Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. I'm seeing palm trees. Think we're in California. Exactly. Yeah, maybe fat, right? I wouldn't go so far as to call the brother fat. I mean, he got a weight problem. <laughs> kind of fat, right? What about him? <laughs> well, Marcellus <laughs> him up good. Word around the campfire is it was on account of Marcellus Wallace's wife. I love the way Tarantino writes character. It is unparalleled the best. These guys have such so what he do? clear voices. And what then? Gave her a foot massage. Okay. 
Did you get burned? What do you mean? You don't be giving myself responses. You're bad at foot massage. You don't think he overreacted? Well, yeah, so I probably expect myself to react the way he did, but he had to expect a reaction. What's a foot massage? A foot massage is nothing. Get my mother a foot massage. No, just laying your hands in a familiar way on Marcellus's new way. Ball pump. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop right there. I mean, eating a bitch out and giving a bitch a foot massage ain't even. <laughs> and sticking your tongue in the holiest of holies ain't the same ballpark. It ain't the same league. It ain't even the same sport. <laughs> but foot massages don't mean shit. Would you give a guy a foot massage? We still haven't cut this whole time. Wow. I know Tarantino demands a lot of his actors. I, I think he de I think he's like, you come word perfect because when I roll the camera, we are going. Oh my God. We still haven't cut. I'm waiting for this cut. Look, just cause I wouldn't get no man a foot massage. Wow. First cut. I would love to know how long that was, like five minutes. Just good company, that's all. Not a date. It's not a date. It's definitely. I love when I predict the, the lines. It makes me feel like a superhero. I hear they got some tasty burgers. I ain't never had one myself. How are they? You mind if I try one of yours? You know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in France? I forgot. No. Tell them, Vincent. Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. You know why they call it that? Because of the metric system. Check out the big brain on it. bread. You're right. The metric system. You mind if I have some of your tasty beverage to wash this down? I'm obsessed with all the permission. <laughs> Do you mind? What is it? We have gold. And and Mr. Wallace, you, you, we we got into this thing with the best intentions. Really, I never. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? <laughs> He's bald. Does he look like a bitch? What? <laughs> Does? Why am I so surprised every time someone gets shot? <laughs> I should not be surprised. When I lay my vengeance upon thee. <laughs> Should've seen that coming. Should've known that was coming. I think you're gonna find Bruce Willis. And if you were gonna make it, you would have made it before now. Is this such an uncomfortable thing to watch? Meaning, I want them to cut to the other side of the scene. Terribly. And they're not. Tarantino is on purpose not showing us the other side of things. And, and we're not used to it. We're just not used to it. In the fifth, your ass goes down. It's like rigging some sort of match. If my ass goes down. Okay, all right, I'm oh, here. Oh, Vincent. Give me a pack of red apples. Build this. Nine. Bruce Willis, man. Movie star, am I right? You're just like, what's he thinking? Um, I'm gonna pause. I just wanna say that I'm pretty obsessed with Tarantino and the way he introduces um, his characters and his plot line. He trusts the shit out of his audience to be smart. And he's like, you will get it. Just bear with me, stick with me. And he doesn't go out of his way to explain things. It's just, drop. he just drops you into the world and he's like, keep up. Now I can hear my mom in the movie theater being like, who's that? What are they doing? But this is how I like to watch a film. Just drop me in the world. Let me um, claw my way out of it. Let me figure it out. Okay, is that what I think it is? This is Panda from Mexico. Very good oh. stuff. I thought it was yeah, Coke, it's Panda. Different, but equally good. Which one's Trudy? I want all the shit. No, that's Jody. That's my wife. <laughs> Looks like someone's injecting air bubbles into their bloodstream, which is not good. I'm no doctor, though. Love a good soundtrack. Who doesn't, right? One. Mama. So this is Black Bob Girl that I've seen a lot of people dress up for during Halloween. I'm assuming it's Uma Thurman. I'm like, what's gonna happen? It's also like tentative, you know? When you don't cut and you just sit in the tension of a long take, you're like, ah! And she's like surveilling him. Drum up that anticipation. This is Jack Rabbit Slims. And Elvis Man should love it. Jack Rabbit Slims, loved. Don't be a... 
Oh, after you, kid. Well, I'm ruined for the rest of the day because son of a preacher man will be stuck in my head. What do you think? I think it's like a wax museum with a pulse. Hi, I'm Buddy. What can I get you? Five dollars shake. Hey, with that shake, Martin and Lewis or Amos and Andy? Martin and Lewis. That's, um, that's Steve Buscemi, the waiter. If it worked in a gimmick where every show, I would have told another joke. <laughs> I promise I won't laugh. That's what I'm afraid of, Vince. That's not what I meant, you know it. Now I'm definitely not gonna tell you because it's been built up too much. I know the feeling, I know the feeling. You think I can have a sip of that? Be my guest. I gotta know what a five dollar shake I tastes like. I knew he was gonna say that. There's so much not being said. I'm like, well, what do they want to actually say to each other, right? Uncomfortable silences. Why do we feel it's necessary to yak about bull? Do you love how I just yacked through their silence because I was uncomfortable with it? <laughs> Proving her exact point. Don't you just love it when you come back from the bathroom to find your food waiting mm -hmm. for you? Um, Did it involve the F word? No, 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 no. Foot massage. Giving you a foot massage. <laughs> you heard Marsalis through Tony Rocky Hard at a four-story window for giving me a foot massage? I'm so excited to clear up this rumor. Like, quite literally, I'm pumped. Marsalis throwing Tony out of a four-story window for massaging my feet seem reasonable? No, it seemed excessive. Now I want to dance. I want to win. I want that trophy. Right. So dance good. All right. I'm here for a first Ooh, you see, I would twist with shoes on because you kind of need that like shh, shh, shh. It's got to be able to like move. Like my feet are too sticky. You know what I'm saying? And we know this because when I used to play Dance Dance Revolution, your feet would stick to the mat. You're welcome. You could see that Pierre did truly love the matter most Wow. I feel like I've seen this tableau before. It's cool. He's getting right up in the action with that handheld camera. I, I just love it. I honestly would, would have given anything and would give anything to watch Quentin Tarantino direct. <laughs> I love it. One drink and I say... I love a pep talk. I'm like, one seltzer. You fake it. Kick back. If you're watching with me, kick back. Do it. <laughs> Nosebleed? <gasps> Does she die? <gasps> no. No. No, she doesn't die. <gasps> so listen, I gotta go. Travolta. Right? Any fucking day now you pick up the phone I'll bum 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 You too! Oh this is a frantic camera, I'm obsessed. Pop 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 pop. Alright, what I need is a big fat magic marker. A, a felt pen! A black magic marker! Is this accurate? Can you give someone a shot in the heart like this? I feel like it just needs to go in your bloodstream, right? Not your heart. Ready? One. I'm scared. Please. <sighs> okay, they played it for comedy, thank God. <laughs> now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go home and have a heart attack. Same, bro. Do you want to hear my Fox Force 5 joke? I think I'm still a little too petrified to laugh. No, you won't laugh because it's not funny. But if you still want to hear it, I'll tell it. Ugh, Tarantino with his payoff. Baby Tomato starts lagging behind and Pop Tomato gets really angry. Goes back and squishes him. Says, ketchup. <laughs> ketchup. Wow, that's the best payoff I could have imagined for that. Like a real moment where like no one's laughing. She's like, now I can tell it. That's really funny to me. Wow. I'm learning a lot about screenplay writing. I should just watch Tarantino forever. I see you walking. Hello, little man. Hello, Boy. I'm uh, Christopher sure, Walken. You. That was a really bad impression, sorry. See. Delivering to your infant father his dad's gold watch. This watch. His boy's birthright, so he hid it. 
In one place he knew he could hide something. Where? Something. His ass. Up his ass. Up his ass. Then I hid this uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass. Two years. Then... <laughs> little man, I gave the watch to you. <gasps> That's him grown up. That the little boy is Willis. It's official. It's official. You killed the other boxing man. What? He's dead. The radio said he was dead. <sighs> I didn't know he was dead until you told me he was dead. Now that I know he's dead, you wonder how I feel about it. He's like, I love it. You're the least bit bad about it. Oh. Okay. Hey, Pot. You put belly. Pot bellies are sexy. Well. Like, what a character choice. Like, who writes this? I wish I had a pot belly. But on a woman, a pot belly is very sexy. Does she, like, want to be pregnant or something? Were you the winner? I won, all right. You could say that. You still retiring? Which? <sighs> yes, lemon pie. I feel like if I was alone, I'd rewind to see if I could see full frontal from Willis, but I won't do that. I won't subject you guys to that. The time of the day is a good time for pie. Blueberry pie to go with What are we about to discover? Top, Look at the slow move in. Where's my watch? Where the f is it? Oh my god, they're gonna have to go back for it. <laughs> It's not your fault. <laughs> Take it back. Sorry. Yo, if I just killed a guy. Ugh. Do not go back to your apartment. But Tarantino's brilliant and he built up how important this watch is by showing us that story with Christopher Walken. So it's like, it's completely justified. We're like, yup, we get it, we know. Tarantino's a master of stakes is what I'm gonna say. He's a master of raising the stakes. Like, it was a big deal when Mia ODs because we know that Marcellus threw a guy off a balcony. And it's a big deal that she forgot the watch because we know what the watch means. A little too easy. Mm. <laughs> he's gonna get caught because he stopped to make Pop-Tarts and Jed. That's amazing. Oh, God. <gasps> what? Oh, my. Oh, my God. I thought for sure he makes it to the end. That's so crazy. No one's safe in a Tarantino film. Everyone's going to die, right? Pulp fiction. Pulp fiction. I don't tell me. It's Wallace. <gasps> oh my God. He's dead. Kathy Griffin? What? Kathy Griffin is in this? <laughs> Head blown the Hold it right there, goddammit. <sighs> Say none of your business, mister! Okay, all right, okay, we get it. Yeah. I have no idea what's coming. Who is this? <laughs> Damn, Willis's hands are lethal weapons at this point. Okay, Bruce Willis, what are we doing? What are we doing, bro? Bro, bro? Oh God, Tarantino, man. He's like, how do we make the third act just pure style? Swords. <laughs> what? <gasps> you guys, what? what that gun, don't you say? Step aside, what? Yes, band together. 
I'm shook having known zero things about this plot. <laughs> you lost all your LA privileges, deal? Get your ass out of here. That's a one take for the books. Wow. Jess, come on, no talking now. Uh, are we in danger? Yes, bitch, you're in danger. Come on. <laughs> I would be asking the same questions as her, but I'm pissed right now. I'm like, get Where did you get this car. motorcycle? It's not a motorcycle, baby. It's a chopper. Come on, let's go. Stop asking what questions. What happened to my hunt? Whose chopper is this? <sighs> Zed's. Who's Zed? <sighs> Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. The funny situation. Yes, you did. When I lay my vengeance upon me. <laughs> Is this the scene from earlier, I think? Yes. That was you. Nah, you mother- <laughs> Did he miss? <laughs> so that's how that scene ended? That means that God came down from heaven and stopped the bullets? That's right. That's exactly what it means. All right, it was a miracle. Can we go now? No one does anger like Samuel L. Jackson. Why don't you tell him at the same time why? Don't worry, I will. Yeah, and I'll bet you $10,000 he lasts his ass off. I don't give a damn if he does. Marvin, what do you make of all this? Man, I don't even have an opinion. Well, you gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped him? Oh! What's happening? Oh! oh. oh. Oh man, I shot Marvin in the face. Why the f you do that? Well, I didn't mean to do it, it was an accident. Oh man, I see some crazy ass <sighs> in my time, but this. Oh, so my battery died, but I think we captured the shock. <laughs> I was drying my hands. Well, you're supposed to wash them first. Well, you watched you get them wet. I used to say soap you did, and when I finished the towel, it didn't look like no goddamn maxi pad. Now, what if he was to come in here and see his towel like. <laughs> Oh, I'm obsessed with this. I'm having so much fun. Damn, Jimmy, this some serious going maze. Me and Vincent would have been satisfied with some freeze dried taster's choice, right? Tarantino! These are the sights and sounds of California, baby. 40 minutes to get the f out of Dodge. Which, if you do what I say, when I say it, should be plenty. You got a corpse in a car, minus a head <laughs> in a garage. Take me to it. This car. <laughs> oh, God. Why is this so funny? Jimmy. So if a cop stops us and starts sticking his big snout in the car, the subterfuge won't last. But at a glance, the car will appear to be normal. Jimmy, lead the way. Boys, get to work. I'm like, genius. This is exactly how I would clean up a crime scene. Set of please would be nice. <laughs> get a straight buster. I'm not here to say please. please. I'm here to yes. tell you what to do. So pretty please, with sugar on top. Clean the fuck. They've wasted so much time already just talking about it. I'm so dead. <laughs> oh, man. I will never forgive your ass for this. I will never get over the shock of that shot. <laughs> Did you ever hear the philosophy that once a man admits that he is wrong, that he is admit? Come on, come on, do it! Do it, do it! Uh, uh. The last act of every Tarantino film is always such a fun little ride. Dry enough. Toss them their clothes. It's kind of like where he turns up the comedy. <laughs> Don't do shit unless. Unless what? Unless you do it first. Spoken like a true product. How about you, Lash LaRue? Can you keep your spurs from jingling and jangling? Mr. Wolf left. The gun went off. I don't know why. I'm cool. I promise you. Fair <laughs> enough. You know, I'll go for some breakfast. You feel like having breakfast with me? Cool. That's the other story we didn't tie up when they were holding up the diner. Does he act? Move! And I'll execute every one of you! Modesty Blaze. We've seen it before. When he died, we saw the book. Open it. I remember when they opened it and I had what the question, it? what was it? Is that what I think it is? What is it? We're not gonna do anything stupid, are we? Don't you hurt him! Nobody's gonna hurt anybody. We're all gonna be like three little Fonzies here. <laughs> hey. Yolanda! It's cool, baby. It's cool. We still just talking. Come on, point the gun at me. Point the gun at me. <laughs> this is comedy. I want you to go in that bag and find
behind my wallet. Which one is it? It's the one that says bad mother. The one that says bad mother. <laughs> That's it. That's my bad mother. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't kidding. I thought he was kidding. Oh my god. This doesn't work without the best actors in the game. I think we should be leaving now. I love that. That um makes for such a better ending. What's in the case? Okay, oh my god, guys. I have now seen let me stop rolling the chair. I have now seen pulp fiction whole I always feel kind of ridiculous doing these like ending thoughts because I think I've said absolutely everything during the movie I'm not really someone who keeps quiet during it. So I think that um, you know how I felt about this It's just like Tarantino man just a masterclass in how do you weave a narrative a masterclass in character I almost can't believe like I'm like what comes first this insanely well-written character and then you you fit in a perfect actor or is it like these actors are just bringing something just unbelievable to the roles? I just can't even deal. It's so good. It is so riveting. You can't look away. And I think this is a movie I definitely have to watch again to understand the order of events. Yeah, so they, they go to the house, they pick up the suitcase, then they accidentally blow that guy's head off, and then they go do that. Then they come to the restaurant in the funny t-shirts go through the whole holdup, then they go give the suitcase to Marcellus. Then it's just like, yeah, I feel like I have to go watch this again for the order of events, but yeah, it's a near perfect movie and I cannot come up with anything wrong with it. And I wanted to let you guys know that I went and got myself a Pop-Tart. <laughs> I ate one cold and one heated up in honor of Vincent, who makes his demise while Bruce Willis went for a pop shot to pop. I should probably stop eating and drinking on camera. I'm sure you guys hate me. The shot of Vincent pledging the syringe into me as chest was filmed by having John Travolta pull the needle out and then running the film backwards. Watch carefully and you'll see a mark on Mia's chest disappear when she's revived. In the opening sequence with Honey Bunny and Pumpkin, Jules can be heard talking about quitting the life and Vincent can be seen entering the bathroom. Cool, yeah. That would be something I would look out for on a second watch. I'd be like, can we see the way that the timeline fits in? The movie costs only eight million to make. The initial budget was reportedly even lower until Bruce Willis was added to the cast. He had a recent string of domestic flops, but was still a box office draw overseas. Five million went to pay the actors and actresses salaries. The film was already profitable when its worldwide rights were sold for 11 million, mainly on the strength of Willis's presence. It went on to gross over 200 million at the box office. Wow. Uma Thurman originally turned down the role of Mia Wallace. Quentin Tarantino was so desperate to have her as Mia, he ended up reading her the script over the phone. I did, I did want to know about this. Chandler Lindauer had to sit through Captain Kuhn's speech delivered by Christopher Walken. Because of his young age, he had no clue what Walken was saying, including the use of adult language. I can tell they were just using an insert shot of this poor kid just being like, the word is used 265 times. Funnily enough, I don't even clock the all. I didn't clock. I was like, okay. I I feel like audiences today are so used to the F word being used. I I didn't even. I wasn't like, oh, that's excessive. It was perfect. It was the perfect amount. Of Quentin Tarantino wrote the role of Jewel specifically for Samuel L. Jackson. That kind of answers an earlier question of mine where it's like, is the character just like perfectly written and then the actor comes in and it's like, no, he kind of writes with the actor in his brain. Um, it was almost given to Paul Calderon after a great audition. When Jackson heard this, he flew to Los Angeles and auditioned again to secure the role. Vincent Vega is the only character who is present in every single segment of the film. Vincent Vega and Marcellus Wallace's wife, the gold watch, the Bonnie situation, and the diner. Ugh, I'm obsessed. I want to kind of write a movie like this. One, two, three, four. So just write it in four situations and try to have them interweave. So easy, right guys? <laughs> okay, chronologically, the last scene of the movie is Butch and Fabian riding away on a chopper. Oh, this is where Pulp Fiction comes from. Something bad happened every time Vincent went to the bathroom, always with a Pulp Fiction book to read, which upon his exiting involved him, me at overdosing, Pumpkin and Honey Bunny robbing the restaurant, Butch picking up the gun. Yes, he's always in the bathroom reading the book. I didn't clock that at all. Wow, I feel dumb. Oh, wow. Part of the dance that Travolta and Thurman perform at Jack Rabbit Slims was copied movement by movement from the dance performed early in Fellini's classic Eight and a Half. I saw Eight and a Half in college. Marcellus. Yeah, Marcellus and Mia never speak to one another on screen. That's so funny. A large chunk of the budget, $150,000 went to creating the Jack Rabbit Slims set. That was so cool. I would give anything to live in that set and just visit it for a little. Speculation abounds as to the nature of the mysterious glowing contents of the case, which Tarantino said was simply a MacGuffin plot device 
device? Could it be Elvis's gold suit, seen worn by Val Kilmer as Elvis in True Romance? The most persistent theory was that Marcellus Wallace's, it's Marcellus Wallace's soul. The story goes that when the devil takes a person's soul, it's removed through the back of the head. When we see the back of Marcellus's head, he has a band-aid. Yes, he does have a band-aid, covering the precise spot indicated by tradition for soul removal. He sold his soul to the devil, which would combination, which would explain why the combination to open up the briefcase is 666. Cool. Context, the contents of the briefcase, briefcase or whatever the viewer wants it to be. It's funny, in the, early in the film, I just assigned something really normal to it. I was like, it's gold, it's money, it's whatever. Later in the film, when I realized they weren't going to reveal it, I was like, oh. And I like that, I like that choice, obsessed. Movies line, you know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in Paris, they call it a royale with cheese, was voted number 81 in the 100 greatest movie lines by premiere in 2007, and that's cool. Oh, sick. Mia Wallace's comment, and Elvis man, you should love this, is a reference to a deleted scene where Mia claims that everyone can be classified. Oh no, I feel like I didn't see like a long cut of this. It's sad. Where Mia claims that everyone can be classified as either an Elvis person or a Beatles person. Tarantino says he removed the scene because of the film cliche of having one character film another with a handheld camera. It's also worth noting that Jules calls Pumpkin Ringo as a re reference to Ringo Starr, making him a Beatles person. I would have liked to have seen that scene, seen that scene. Chronologically, the first scene in the movie has Vincent and Jules chatting in their car on the way to do a job. The last chronological scene has Butch and Fabian riding away on the hotel on the motorcycle. And the last line in the movie is therefore, Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. Tarantino originally intended My Sharona to be played during the Gimp Fortress sequence, but Wrights had already been licensed to another film, Reality Bites. On top of this, one of the members of the band had become a born-again Christian and did not want the song to be associated with the scene of sexual violence. Hi, Sharona. Oh, this didn't land on me because I have no idea about drugs. Mia overdosed on heroin because she is a cocaine user. I thought that that was coke, like laced coke. And when she sees the heroin in Vincent's coat pocket, she assumes it's cocaine. It's a white powder in a plastic baggie and it looks like coke. Oh, I didn't get that. I just thought her coke was laced. The problem is when Vincent goes to Lance's house to score heroin, Lance informs him he's out of balloons and asks if a baggie would be all right. Yup. Well, you know I'm not on drugs, people. Oh my god, the t-shirt Jimmy gives to Vincent after they get hosed down bears the logo of the UC Santa Cruz banana slugs. This is not a joke. The banana slug is the official mascot of USC. UCSC. Yeah, wow. So I'm reading up about the locations. The restaurant scene was filmed at Hawthorne Grill, originally Holly's, located at 13763 Hawthorne Boulevard, Hawthorne, California. The building was demolished soon after filming, which pisses me off and makes me so mad. But um, which leads me to say, this movie's a real love letter to Los Angeles, isn't it? In a very cool way. I just wanna say, if, if it wasn't said enough, that head being blown off in the car moment, iconic, honestly. I'm a dead at the Kathy Griffin cameo. Like, how did that happen? Oh wait, didn't she date him? Yo, I think they dated. Oh, they didn't. They briefly dated, but Kathy has maintained that they did not sleep together. <laughs> Oh, did they take their shoes and socks off or just shoes off during the Jackrabbit Slims number because Quentin Tarantino has a foot fetish? Hmm? I'm not so stupid now, right guys? Just kidding, I'm not stupid. Butch chose the samurai sword to save Marcellus because the overarching theme of this movie is retaining one's honor in face of adversity. Butch was going to skip town and go on the run for Marcellus before he realizes that leaving Marcellus to be raped or worse by Maynard and Zed was dishonorable. The sword is associated with a samurai, a position of honor in feudal Japan. I liked the choice to include the sword. That was awesome. The demise of Vincent may be a tragic confluence of circumstance. He's a cocaine user, which is known to cause constipation. He switches to heroin, another frequent cause of constipation. After Mia's near-fatal near overdose, he probably swore off drugs completely. Going cold turkey may have cleared up his constipation by the time that he was waiting for Butch near his apartment a few days later. This would explain why he had to go. <laughs> 159 page screenplay, wow. Okay, you heard what I have to say. You saw my reaction to Pulp Fiction. So definitely let me know what you thought down in the comments. What did you think of this movie when it came out? Did you like it? Did you see it in the theaters? Um, I have seen a lot of Tarantino's last few releases in theaters and I just know what being in a theater can do for a movie. So let me know, did you see that like head exploding scene in the theaters? Did the whole audience gasp? Like, what was it like? I have to know. I'm obsessed with stories like that. I love, 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 love when a collective gets together and watches a movie. So um, if you want more from me, you can definitely hit the link in my description box below for Patreon just to, um, yeah, see my full length reaction to this if you want to watch it along with me. And on that note, I'm going to finish eating my Pop-Tart. <laughs>